Uh, mm-hmm. This first uh, topic right here, if you can see there, it is a movie called The Silent Sea. TV show. TV show called The Silent Sea. Thank you. Uh, and this is a Korean drama mm-hmm. that... Uh, there's been a lot of success in that realm this year. And it, it, it's... Uh, what do you call it? Like, it's... Uh, it's like a... Crossover to American audiences, right? It's always been a phenomenon, but, like... Um the popularity of K dramas, like the first thing was like the romance ones. But first it was K pop. No, no, no. Am- first it was like. I'm just saying, like in America, K pop mm-hmm. took uh, America by storm, like what, five years ago or something like that? A little bit longer than that. Uh, time goes by pretty fast these days. K pop was very big here for a while. Yeah, it was big because of Big Bang, Psy, and then BTS. I prefer BTS's old things because they used to do rap. But then they changed their whole branding. And K-dramas was popular before K-pop because, like, there's boys over flowers. But I'm saying here in America, they No, became... it was in America. Okay, okay so I just, I just missed the boat on these? Yeah, but you can watch it on Netflix. Boy. When was this? How long ago was this? Early 2000s. Okay, so... Yeah, basically, there's boys over flowers. There's um, City, um, City Hunter, which is a movie with um, one of Big Bang's singers. He's the rapper. Um, T.O.P. or top whatever you go figure yeah. T.O.P. means top well it stands for the absolute perfect that was what it stands for the what the absolute perfect isn't that an O not an A I don't I'm know I'm just letting the silence sit there <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I, uh, don't know. I have no idea. So, um, so, so they've been popular. You're saying for for longer than I'm giving them credit for. It mm-hmm. just feels like they're becoming more popular now. It's becoming more mainstream. Well, that's what I mean. When I say popular, I mean mainstream. I, I don't mean popular in general. I mean every uh, it's genre has its niche. It's becoming less cool. Like when hipsters used to be yes. like not mainstream, but then it became like mainstream, and then everybody's like, I'm not gonna be a hipster anymore. It was like that. We love our hipsters here. Yeah. Not really. We don't really hey. like hipsters. Are you? A hi- do you consider yourself a hipster? No. No. Uh, yeah. You're. You're very. You're very. No. Nah, I'm you're, quirky. You're, you're, yeah. <laughs> that's the. That's the word for it. You're quirky. So th- this show is called the Silent Sea, and what it is, it's basically about a group of scientists that are sent to outer space to retrieve something. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we're going to get into vague details here because I don't want to. For uh, my my thoughts are going to be more general consensus on the show, uh, at least as far as what the ones that I've seen, which are Squid Games and um, uh, Hellbound. Mm-hmm. I would rate this third. Uh, I would rate Hellbound first, Squid Game second, this one third. And I've, I'm granted, I'm only we're only I'm only two episodes in, so oh, I'm giving really? you. Oh, really? You put Squid Game second? Yes, I would put. Well, that's that's personal preference mm. you, that for me. But like, uh, as far as this show goes, uh, what it does right um, is it tells visual it does it has unbelievable visuals the actual um cgi for the space shuttle and most of the moon stuff you know stuff once they get to the moon because that's what the story point is is they're going to the moon to retrieve something uh related to the fact that the country or the world is in a a water drought yeah that's what they're that's what's going on here if you look at the uh the yeah. it says um uh, for the description, it says, set in the future with a planet that suffers from a lack of water and food caused by desertification. I didn't know that was a word. <laughs> Yoon Jae is a soldier for the space agency. He is selected uh, for a team including Jian, or is it Jian? I have no clue. Okay. To travel, uh, to travel to the moon. Their mission is to retrieve a mysterious sample from an abandoned research station. Uh, and, and so basically, the the one complaint, the biggest complaint that I have so far with the show is the pacing, which is extremely slow. You saw that even in the second in the second uh, episode. They really let scenes sit mm-hmm. and simmer for way too long early on. Basically, my my logic is that if you're if you're gonna get people to commit to like an eight hour uh, time span of their life, right? To commit to watch a show like this, you need to hook them good and good and well in that first episode, <laughs> and you need to do it early on because yeah. we're just in a world now where there's so much people can watch that if you can't hook somebody and get them watching and excited in the first twenty to thirty minutes, I, I think you lose a lot of people that way. And this show is very very slow paced. 
uh, they show early on there's these scenes of uh, people going to get water from these water uh, the, these machines that basically dispense water to the public yeah. and what it is is basically you get your water based on your social credit score and that seems important later on uh, in the second episode when they're talking about their ranking mm -hmm. but it didn't need to be as long as it was or the scenes of her there's scenes of her um, uh, giving water to a dog that are just that you could have gotten the same emotional resonance out of it uh, that would have you could have done that in like half the time in you my know opinion. what did it better what uh, Mad Max they did it better <laughs> that's true <laughs> because they're in a water drought who, who is the one in the show with the, with the neck tattoo that you said you saw, remember him from he Hellbound? was in Hellbound uh, he's the one is scroll that, up uh, oh you're in a different article in the vanity uh, no I'm, I'm in the I'm in the IMDB right now oh. is it Goong Yu I Gong Yu I think I think he's the one with the sharper face. Okay. Um, that guy's fantastic as mm -hmm. far as like his, he, he gives off this really good, like kind of jerk, uh, way too confident, kind of uh, suspicious. Uh, I, I almost feel like the neck tattoo is like there to make him look suspicious. I remember we're only two episodes in, so yeah. who knows like whether that plays a role in it, mm -hmm. but he does a really good job. And then the lead actress, she is just, she looks so forlorn the whole time. And they, <laughs> they make, reference to that the fact that that's important in this right mm -hmm. that uh she has a backstory for wanting to why she wants to go to the moon to do this but she just looks beaten down and sad you and said she looks like on the verge of crying she al she always looks like she's on the verge of tears mm -hmm. uh what i would have liked to see more of is like there are scenes where she has to step up and make command decisions early on like when she takes her helmet off mm -hmm. uh as she's the first person to take her helmet off inside this place inside this space station i, I would have loved to seen more of like a like a turn in her mm -hmm. in her in her nonverbal acting. Yeah, does that make sense? Like, yeah. Uh, so she's like the Korean Kristen Stewart, no emotions. She no no. I, I don't think it's that. I think it's that she knows the emotion she's trying to convey, mm -hmm. but she doesn't leave from that uh, and enter a new mode. Now this might change down the line, right? Mm -hmm. Her emotions might change farther on down the line. But as far as this goes, I didn't feel like it uh, it changed that much. Like she looked really depressed the whole time. And in the scenes where she has to emote more, I would have loved to have seen more from her on that. But in general, I think the biggest uh, flaw this has is bad, bad dub. Um, yeah, you're watching dub, and I was like, what I, is this? I can't just do subtitles. I have to do dub as well. So when, when you get bad, uh, it, it just doesn't seem like it works to me. Like, it always feels like you're hearing the same voice. Uh, the same two or three voices over every character. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't differentiate well. Uh, the way it's lined up just doesn't work for me. <coughs> it was so much better in Hellbound yeah. and Squid Game. So. Yeah. Well, do you think it's because they have like better like marketing and then like a budget is bigger i th this thing look i mean the budget on this thing looks good i mean the the si the special effects on the ship when they're walking out on what is supposed to be the moon mm -hmm. that's all looks top notch the yeah. scenes of the ship actually blasting off look really really good to me mm -hmm. so i feel like the money was there i just don't know if uh how much of that goes into the budget for you know your dub and your stuff like that i'm assuming it's the same because a lot of these that's like the same agencies that do that stuff right mm -hmm. the the company that dubs for this show probably dubs for a lot of of different shows so yeah. that was my biggest complaint now that's coming from someone who is deaf in one ear mm -hmm. and uh so when i'm paying attention uh i notice when you know you just see it in the face, you know, the way yeah. that, the, yeah, it just, I'm having a really hard time explaining why it doesn't work. <laughs> no, I remember this TikTok where this guy, he, I think he's a Korean American and he like makes fun of the point because like this is when Squid Games is like still banging. Yep. Um, he said, the reason why you should watch sub and it's better than dub because look, and he spoke in Korean, like the Korean mm -hmm. language. And then after that, he edited it where he did dub mm -hmm. and he was like, it doesn't See, work. It doesn't work that well, especially in scenes with action or movement. Mm -hmm. Like you can't recreate that in a sound booth, unless you're um, Hugh Jackman, where he's like actually running. D well, <laughs> I'm saying, like very hard to do, right? Yeah. Like, like you're you're doing the thing where like uh, like there was a scene in the second episode where the guy is getting down on his hands and knees to reach under the thing to get and a he's flashlight. Like, oh, what is that? But there's no there's no like compression in his voice and mm -hmm. like from like you know when he's leaning down like you don't hear yeah. it in his voice that that's happening so like. I, that's stuff I notice mm -hmm. and you are correct like a lot of people are very much purist they think you should only read sub and not not listen to dub like, well like for me I just prefer it because like I want 
to hear like but do you understand one. what they're saying i read it in sub but i'm saying but do you understand generally what they're saying and i only understand numbers number okay i only understand numbers like okay Hana, Su, so Se. you'd prefer to hear their actual voice mm -hmm. okay and, and you're probably right like maybe down the line this will change for me and i'll find myself liking that but right now another problem with that is like remember me and you like to do stuff while we watch movies and tv shows yeah i was it's, answering emails while you're like looking for articles n well not in this like in this i tried to pay as close of a Oh, okay. as possible but in general like if i'm watching something in passing and i'm doing stuff in my room or i'm in my in my office or whatever uh i do need the audio otherwise i'm not going to be able to read what's on screen the whole time mm -hmm. and now i try to now if i'm now that, if that's something i'm reviewing i don't do that yeah. i don't divide my attention if i'm gonna review it somewhere yeah i don't know for me i feel like this show just watching like half of the second episode it it feels kind of like it's dragging on. I will watch it. Don't worry, you guys. I will watch the second. I've been uh, told that it, pick, second that, that it picks up and becomes more of like a sci-fi horror. It, and that's the, what i was assuming yeah. because the commercial that we were watching for the trailer it looks like a horror yeah and the the one thing that it does well is as slow as that pace is it is very very it works very very well in conjunction with the fact that it's very atmospheric meaning mm -hmm. like the sound design on this show outside of the dub is fantastic like when yeah. they're walking and it's like just creaking mm -hmm. you can hear the footsteps mm -hmm. creak Oh, you know around the ship yeah. the sound design is incredible mm -hmm. but it's just that the the language to it just doesn't add up for me the way it did with hellbound mm -hmm. so i'm interested to see where it goes like if we this is one of those things where it's like we're kind of lucky to be able to do this mm -hmm. uh like uh, if this hadn't hooked me in like the first 30 minutes of that first episode i probably would have just abandoned it and found mm -hmm. something else but since i've seen decent reviews for this show and technically for me dialogue heavy work is something i'm more of a fan of so i'm i don't necessarily dislike slow pacing mm -hmm. but for me it just feels like this one wasn't paced well for different reasons like mm -hmm. it's hard to explain why but like usually slow pace works really well if there's really good dialogue mm -hmm. but the dialogue in the show also feels kind of sparse like they're having very general conversations yeah it doesn't feel like it's dialogue heavy it's just action and dialogue uh um, sparse yeah in a way so i'm hoping that it picks up and once it becomes more uh with more of a tinge of horror to it that it picks up the pace yeah um i i do think it's cgi the sound design all do very well the lead actress uh from what i've seen in her other work is really really good mm -hmm. hopefully she div you know gets more emotive down the line who's the lead actress again can you explain uh, the other work she's been uh, into also it's b-a-e is that ba or bay Beiduna? Yeah, Bay. Okay. Like the word Bay, yes. like yeah, Salt I, Bay. That's why, yeah. That's how it's pronounced. Uh, she was in Kingdom. Mm -hmm. uh, she was in, uh, what was the other one? She, she's done, it looks like mostly, uh, ca you know, Korean Korean dramas and stuff Korean like dramas. that. But she, she was in uh, The Cloud Atlas, I believe, was the other mm -hmm. thing that I remembered her from. And, oh, uh, so Linda, 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 not, not that. I remember we were Jupiter watching. Ascending, that's mm -hmm. what it was. Uh, and Sense8. A lot of people liked Sensei. That was uh, that was a very popular show. So my hope is that her and the and the other the guy who played the other actor, yeah. uh, his name was I believe uh, Gong Yu yeah. or Jun Lee. It was one of those two. Let's see if it's this guy. No, it's it's the other one. It's so, the other one. Yeah. Though. So, but, but, but Ninja Assassin is good. There you go. <laughs> Sorry, I just saw it like when he passed by <laughs> so it's a it's a pretty contained cast so mm -hmm. we'll, we'll see how it goes uh i do think if you guys don't mind uh a slower <coughs> pace uh and more tension uh with your dramas i i would recommend at least checking it out and looking mm -hmm. into it um it may not be for everyone uh it definitely it doesn't have the intrigue that uh hellbound had for me initially but my hope is that as the tone of it changes with the style of uh, show with with it becoming more horror driven that it gets better but we'll epi we'll review episode three and four on Monday I don't know like we we're watching the second episode and Andy came in and he was watching it with us mm -hmm. and he was like it kind of reminds me of that movie the one with the numbers on their wrists and like um if they run out all of their numbers that means they're gonna die I don't know what like, that is oh I watched it I just forgot what the name is somebody help me in the comments basically it's a drama thriller movie mm -hmm. um basically not everybody's born with it but there is like a scene where a baby's born with it so basically you have a set number of times and it goes down like a timer okay so if you run out of time you're gonna die and there's like a scene where the main actor 
um, he is doing an arm wrestling, and this is how they sw- they are. There's no currency, so this is set in the distant future. There's no currency. Their currency is the time on their wrist. Okay. So, the main actor, he's doing arm wrestling, and basically, whoever loses, they steal all the time from the loser. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. I don't know what it's called. Yeah. I, see, I, I forgot what the name is, but like Andy said, it kind of reminds yeah. him of that. Okay. And I was like, what's the correlation of it? And he didn't really explain. He was just a little bit busy. Okay. But I was like, I like how he connected that movie that nobody remembers the name of to a TV show that's kind of long driven. Yep. Well, we'll we'll see. We'll we'll see mm-hmm. how it turns out. Like uh, one of the cool things about doing this is that we're allowed to like kind of uh, get into these shows that maybe I wouldn't have given the time of day to before and maybe it comes out you better. You need to watch Allison in Borderland. That one's good. It's like a Japanese version. Well, it came out before Squid Games, but best way to describe it, it's a Japanese version of Squid Games, but instead of people volunteering, they get pulled into a different dimension. They're still on planet Earth, but everybody around in planet Earth kind of disappeared. It's only the people who are in the game. And basically you play different games and you can't opt out. Once you're in it, you can't opt out. So there's like one game where basically everybody can live if you work like as a team um one game that made me really like upset because like a lot of the main characters died um was it's called wolf and sheep basically there's one person who's a wolf and everybody else is a sheep you Mm -hmm. have to run away from the wolf and basically um they're wearing these like sci-fi glasses where like if you look at the person they become the wolf and the rules of the game is if the wolf catches you and you become the wolf you become them but it's either the wolf dies if they can't catch anybody or everybody else dies no oh. mm-hmm. what's it called um allison in borderland allison how long ago was that made that was made like barely this year okay yeah all right this year but it wasn't like it was highest rankings for a little bit but not a lot. i've never heard of it because they didn't have a lot of advertisement for it okay because um i was talking to sarah about it she said maybe because like one of the main characters died in the first episode what do you mean died um died on the show or died in real life no 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 in the show okay why would that affect the promotion (laughs) no no no, like that's what that's her theory because like usually like people who are invested in shows they kind of want the main characters live like for me i was kind of upset like when the one of many of the main characters died but they did it for to let their friend live on and like when he played the game he was like oh i know how to get around this game but basically each like so how everybody plays you volunteer to get in the games Mm -hmm. you can't opt out and each game is symbolized by um deck cards so interesting yeah so if you play in a game that's like a a ace that means like pretty much only one person can survive Interesting. everybody else dies alice in board in borderland yeah so and each um, you have to collect these cards too as winners. Okay. And if you collect all of them, apparently you can ascend to the next level. Interesting. Yeah. I will have to look in that. Is that on Netflix? Yeah, it's on Netflix. Okay. It's, um, it was out before Squid Games. Thanks for watching this clip, guys. If you want to see full episodes or follow us on social media, links are in the description below. Bye. Bye.